Hey guys, how are you? Andrew here for Mr. AC Pilot. Since so many of you have asked how and if I can make you a Minecraft intro, I've decided to show you in this three-part tutorial series. So here is what we're going to make. Now, you can change this to suit your needs. You can use your own design, your own logo, and I'll actually show you how to make any item that you want to spill out of a chest. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, so today I'll be using Autodesk Maya for animation and Adobe After Effects for the final video, but this will translate fairly well to your own program of choice. Uh, just as a note, I will be using Maya 2014 and you may find that a couple of the buttons are in slightly different positions, but I'll try to point this out as I go along. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do in a blank project here is, um, well, we're going to create a blank project to start off with. So we're going to go to the file and uh, the project window here. And what I'm going to do is just click the new button and I'm going to create a new uh, project. I'm just going to call this chest underscore intro underscore tutorial. You can name it what you'd like. Once you're happy with that, click accept. Okay, and now we've got our uh, basic scene. So the first thing we're going to do is create the chest. Um, we'll do the, the geometry in this lesson, in the second lesson we'll work on animation, and then in the third lesson we'll tie everything together with our final product. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a cube. Um, I'm going to draw it in here as a wireframe, and if you press the uh, 6 key on your keyboard, that's going to change it to shaded view. Uh, over here on the right, I'm going to change the inputs. Um, this is just for the size of a chest, so I'm going to go for, uh, for the width and the depth, I'm going to go 87.5. And for the height, I'm going to do 93.75. And that is going to give us the exact dimensions of the chest we're going to be making. So what I'll do from here is I'll uh, rename this. Uh, I'll just call this chest. And I'm going to right click, hold, holding the right click button. And down the bottom, I'm going to assign a new material. And I'm going to choose a Lambert material. And then over here in the attribute editor, we can click on this new Lambert 2 that's been created. And in the color slot, I'm going to wire in a file texture. So click on a file. And um, I'm actually going to provide a whole bunch of um, images and all these kind of things you can use. And anything that you see me use uh, will be available in the, um, the download files and links in the description for that. So I'm going to open this up. And um, I'm just going to jump in here to my source images folder, as you can do as well. And I'm going to find this uh, chest texture underscore version one. So I'm going to open that up and uh, boom, there's our chest uh, almost. So we've got the texture on now. Um, the next thing that we're going to create is the lock um, that will go on the front here. So I'm going to create another cube and I'm going to press the W key on my keyboard and actually just drag this out. Um, and now if we go back to the channel box and open up the inputs here, I'll tell you what the, uh, the dimensions for this are. So we're going to go 12.5 by 25 by 6.25. And that's going to create the perfect size lock for us. Now in terms of the position at the top here, I'm going to tell you where it needs to go. Uh, firstly, we'll set the Z at the, uh, sorry, the X to zero. The Y is going to be at 16 and the Z is going to be at 47. And that should perfectly position our lock just at the front there of our chest. Again, I'm going to select this and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to assign a new material. I'm going to give it a Lambert again. Same deal, wire in a, a file node to the color and I'm going to open this up and I'm going to use the lock texture. So I click that and boom, there's our lock, good to go. So I'm just going to take the time really quickly to rename this. So Lambert 2, I'm going to call chest underscore texture. And then the same thing on the lock, Lambert 3, I'm going to name lock underscore texture. All right, so now we've got a basic shape. Um, but what we need to do is split the chest up so it can open. So I'm going to use the, um, the poly split tool. That's um, under the polygon menu here. That's this tool with the uh, yellow line running down the middle. Um, you can also get to this under the edit mesh menu using the interactive split tool. So you should be able to, oh sorry, that's the edit mesh insert edge loop tool. Um, so you should be able to find one of those methods available to you. And I'm going to get in close here and you want to click on one of the edges and actually drag, click and hold and drag this just 
so it's perfectly in line with the middle here. Now if you made a mistake there, you can press Control Z to undo. Um, so once you draw your line there, um, that's where the chest is going to open and close. So I'm going to go ahead um, back to my uh, object here and I'm going to right click and go to face mode and then I'm going to select these top faces and then I'm going to go to mesh extract and this is going to separate the top faces from the bottom um, so now I'm going to right click and go back to the object mode and now you can see when I click these two I have two separate objects one at the top and one at the bottom now what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine this top and the lock together so I'm going to click the top click the lock and I'm going to go to mesh combine and now what we have is the one image and I'm getting a bit of a weird problem here where, with a bit of transparency so if you click on your object and you scroll across to the textures if you right click on the transparency I'm actually going to break the connection I'm going to do the same for the lock texture as well break the connection on the transparency because we don't actually need any transparency and that looks like it's good to go so now we have our um, our lid and we have the bottom part alright too easy so what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to grab the, the top part and I'm actually going to pull this up just so we can work on the inside here for a moment. And I'm going to create a new plane and under the inputs there I'm going to set the width of this again to 87.5 and that's going to be the same width. And I want this to be like kind of the rim, the lip of the inside of the chest here. And so I'm going to move it up roughly into place here. If you're a perfectionist, the exact Y value for this is going to be uh, 15.625. And so we've got that. And under the inputs, we're going to change the subdivisions from 10 to 10, 14 to 14. And now we've got a little cube here for every um, little cube on our texture, or every little square, I should say. So what I'm going to do from here is right click and go into face mode again. And I'm going to select all of the faces except for the outside ones. So you can go ahead and do this. And I'm going to just leave a ring around the outside like that. So with all of these selected, I'm going to click delete. And now I can right click this and go back to object mode. And now I have the rim. So selecting this, we're going to create one more texture. We're going to right click and go down to assign new material. I'm going to choose a Lambert. And instead of plugging in a texture this time, we're going to click on the color and then we're going to click the eyedropper tool here and actually sample um, one of the colors from the border here. So now that the color of the rim is the same as our border. All right. You can see our grids in there. I'm going to go ahead and click the grid hide button. And so this is our rim. Now you'll notice that um, this has uh, the value that we entered in before here for the Y. I'm actually going to go ahead and zero that by going to modify and freeze transforms and now that's given me some zeros so I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this I'm gonna click the object and then hold down control D that's gonna give me a new one I'm gonna pull that up just out of the way and then we can combine this um, bottom lip and our original uh, main chest So select the two items and go mesh combine and now that's the one thing the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to select both of um, both the top of the lid and this top of the rim and I'm gonna go into the translate here and I'm gonna add in zeros that's just gonna move it back down and I'm gonna do the same thing as before mesh combine and now what you should see is that I have one object for the top one object from the bottom now if we move this back down what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna actually get rid of the construction history so you can see here on the side these are all the operations I've done They combine the split rings and so on so by selecting this I'm gonna to go to edit delete by type history and that's gonna clear that away I'm gonna do the same from the bottom edit delete by type history and now I don't have to worry about um, you know disrupting any of the um, you know the inputs to it it's just considered as uh, the one mesh so the last thing I'm going to do for my chest here is I'm going to move the pivot point from the middle here to the back so that we can hinge the uh, chest properly. So I'm going to press the uh, insert key or I believe that's the home key on an Apple keyboard um, 
insert and that's going to bring up the uh, little gizmo that allows me to move around the pivot point and now holding down the V key on my keyboard it changes from the square to a circle and I'm going to grab it and that's going to snap to points on the grid here and I want to put it just so it's in the middle at the back here so you can hold down the V key make sure it's lined up nice um, nice and centered on the back there and then I'll press insert again to come out of that mode and now when we click the top the lid we can click the E key this will give us our rotate options and we can see how this rotates so now we've got a chest we can rotate this up and down and uh, it's looking pretty good so far all right I'm happy with that so I'm gonna go ahead and zero this back out and now that we've finished um, our chest what I'm gonna do is just create a little controller for it so I'm gonna go into create NURBS primitive and I'm gonna create a circle Gonna hit the R key on my keyboard and I'm gonna scale this out just so it surrounds my chest. Now I'm gonna take this opportunity to rename some pieces. So I'm gonna take this top part over here at the name, I'm gonna call it chest lid. The bottom, I'm just gonna call it chest underscore bottom. This controller, I'm gonna call it CTRL for controller underscore chest and I'm gonna actually take the bottom and the top piece and I'm gonna group them together by hitting Control G. So that's gonna create a group and then I'm gonna also rename the group chest underscore group. Okay, so from here what I'm gonna do is go and set up my controls. So I'm gonna actually select the controller and you can see that there's some scale values in here. So I'm gonna freeze the transforms again. Modify, freeze transforms. And it's always important whenever you create a controller to do that so that when you enter in zero values, um, it knows where the default state is. So from here, what I'm gonna do is click on the window, outliner, and this is gonna bring up a list of the items in my scene. And I'm gonna select the chest controller first, and then holding down control, select chest group. And I'm gonna come under the, uh, anim the animation menu bar here. And uh, under the constrain, I'm going to go for a point. I'm going to click the option box just to make sure maintain offset is checked. And uh, that's just going to basically mean that um, they should be related as they are currently arranged in the scene. I'm going to click add and point constraint really means that when I select my controller and I move it, the chest moves with it. So I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go from constraint to orient and I'm gonna add that, so that's the rotation, and I'm gonna go once again, constrain, scale, and that's gonna constrain the scale. So now when I select my controller, I can rotate the chest around, I can also scale it how I would like, and it behaves as it should. So that's pretty much my whole chest setup. I can close the outliner, and you can see I still can click on the top here, and I retain independent control of that rotating. Um, but now I can actually rotate my whole assembly the way I would like. All right, that's pretty handy. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you how to go ahead and create any kind of item in Minecraft. It could be a carrot, it could be uh, any kind of drop, a stick, a sword, whatever. And you'll be able to use this to create whatever you'd like to spill out of the chest. And it's really simple and straightforward. And um, what I'm going to do is actually create a carrot. So the first thing to do is I'm going to take my chest by the controller and I'm going to just move it out of the way just so I've got a bit of working area. And I'm going to create a plane and this plane I'm going to scale um, coming under the inputs, the width and height again are going to be um, actually I'm just going to take this and go to 100 so that's one meter by one meter and I'm going to change the subdivisions to 16 just like in Minecraft so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my mesh and I'm going to right click create one more new material that's going to be a Lambert again and same thing under the color I'm going to plug in a file and when I open this up um, today I'm going to be using the carrots but if you see in the um, folder that I've included, you can select from any text you want and I've included all of the default ones from Minecraft are there. So I'll select carrot, click open, and there's our carrot, it's come straight in. So right clicking on this plane, I'm gonna select face. And I'm actually gonna delete all of the faces that don't belong to the actual carrot where it's got the color. 
So this can be a little bit of a tedious process. Um, depending on how complex the shape is that you're working on, it could take uh, longer or shorter. But I'm going to quickly whiz through here. Almost done. Boom. All right. So there we go. So now I can right click and go to object mode. And you can see I've got a flat version of my object. Well, I think we can do one better. We'll select the object and I'm going to click the button here that says extrude. Um, you can also find this under the polygons menu and it's called extrude under the edit mesh heading. So I'll click extrude and I'm going to pull it up. So now we have a three dimensional object and I can right click this and go back into object mode and you can see here is indeed a three-dimensional carrot. What you're noticing though along the sides here is that the um, sides don't really know where the texture should be. So what I'm going to do, and uh, this is how you should do it um, with your own shape, is selecting the shape. I'm going to go into face mode and on the side here I'm going to select all the faces that need to be orange. I'm just going to double check this. So I've got all of the orange faces. And from here, I'm going to go to create UVs and I'm going to use a planar map. And so I can uh, open up my option box here. I'm going to choose uh, Y axis. That's fine. And I'm going to click project. And what that's going to do is now hollow out all of my um, all of my faces. But we're going to quickly address that by going from window to the UV texture editor. And this is what yours might look like as well. Um, you can go from image here and display the unfiltered version. And here I'm going to scale all these are all the yellow parts here you can see are the edges. And so I'm going to scale this right down really small and I'm going to move it just so it occupies one of the squares. And this way, there we go, I'm happy with that. This way, all of the sides are going to be the same color. Now, you can actually go ahead and you can individually match each face up just to the colors. Uh, it really depends how picky you would like to be. In this case, I'm just going to leave it for the sake of time. But I'll go ahead and fix up the green side. So again, selecting the object, going to the faces. I'm going to select all of the faces on the side here that I want to be green. I'm just going to check that over. I'm happy with that. Again, I'll go to create UVs, planar map, and I'll scale this down really small and I can just move this so that it occupies one of the green squares in my design and uh, I can close this out and right click and go into object mode and there's my carrot, three dimensional carrot. So you can really use this for any shape you want. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing I did before by selecting the carrot and deleting the um, or breaking the connection between the transparency just because we don't need it and uh, you know, now we have not only our chest and our control object, but we also have um, you know, our instance of whatever kind of shape we'd like to create. And you can indeed use this for whatever you would like. Um, just follow the same steps. You can use your own shape cutout. And as I said before, I've provided them all in a folder that I've attached um, as a link in the downloads. So guys, that pretty much wraps us up for the first lesson. In the next lesson, we're gonna go ahead and look at how to animate this all and uh, we'll do some particle magic. And uh, in the third lesson, we'll tie it all together with the uh, final video. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.